In this video, we're going to go forward and look at <clears throat> the two-day DBA for Oracle 12C. Uh, there are two places to start this with. The first is to go into the uh, docs.oracle.com slash English slash database. And the second is through the Oracle Learning Center going into Products Database. The <clears throat> Help Center allows us to go in and look at the database documentation and the common tasks for 10, 11, and 12. Uh, we're going to be looking at the 12C database. If we click on the Get Started, it gives us an introduction and admin essentials and getting started with development. If you click on the admin essentials, it starts you on the Oracle 2-day DBA. Uh, to be honest, I'm not real excited about this interface because it's textual based. So if I go in and look at the introduction, it goes through a bunch of text, which is interesting, it's good reading, but I'm more of a pictorial kind of guy. I like seeing more of the video, which is why I like the Oracle Learning Library. <clears throat> if we go into the 12C database, the two-day DBA gives you the option of the tutorials, which includes the two-day DBA, uh, videos specific on a variety of things you can learn by administrator, learn by developer. But if we start with installing the Oracle database, <clears throat> it gives us the option of clicking on a begin tutorial. And the begin tutorial loads in all of the documentation needed with screenshots. So if we look at the overview, it basically says we need to have a, the Oracle Universe installer we have to have an operating system set up <clears throat> and the operating system has minimum one gig of physical memory set up in it and then it starts in with here's how you install with a basic install for non-containers and it gives you the example of logging in as a member of the admin group getting the Oracle distribution for the uh, 12C database and then launching the installer and here's what the screen looks like now, I like this interface better, and these are the examples we're going to be following. But before we can do this, we actually have to get some of the stuff set up. So for the basic installation, we have to do what's required for the Oracle hands-on lab. Um, <clears throat> and this is uh, the Oracle Linux hands-on lab, which allows us to come in and install. Now, the simplest way to do this is through Oracle VirtualBox. Um, if we click on the virtual box, it will take us to the download page and we can download the, um, the virtual box binary. Um, I've already done this. <clears throat> Notice it's a 106 megabyte file. It takes about uh, five minutes to download on my computer and it came in at 106 megabytes. Pretty straightforward. Once we've got that downloaded, then the next thing we want to do is to download a VirtualBox hands-on lab image for Linux and that's 2.9 gigabytes. <clears throat> so if we click on that it takes us to a page where we can say yes we want to do this we want to download this that will work in the Oracle VirtualBox. Uh, this took about 25 minutes to download it's slightly larger than 2 gigabytes if we look at the uh, size of it, it came in right at 2 gigabytes and took roughly 25 to 30 minutes to download. Once we've got that downloaded, we then go in and say, great, let's do a file import appliance. I'll go ahead and show how that works. In, in the Oracle Virtual Box, you come in and say file, import appliance. We then go look for the files. I've stored everything in a virtual box directory. <clears throat> the Linux 6.5 is located there. We come in and say, let's call this OEL 6.5. Tell it to import. We have to agree to the license. And it takes a couple minutes. Um, it goes and pulls in all of the virtual disk images. Once we have the disk images pulled in and ready, it um, populates everything and it, it will allow us to launch the virtual machine. Now, I'm going to let this run in the background because it's going to take a couple minutes. I've already done this. 
but unfortunately I can't cancel and, and go out and do this, so I'm going to pause. Okay, slightly less than a minute and a half later, we now have the operating system image downloaded. We're ready to run. We launch it. It will come up with some warnings. It'll take about a minute to uh, start up. It goes through the normal boot sequence. Uh, it gives us the warnings of the mouse uh, integration with uh, VirtualBox. Not that big of a deal, but it is a bit of a pain to have to click and unclick this at a regular basis. So the default login for this VM is Oracle with the password of Oracle. So once it comes up, um, it'll ask us to log in. We log in as the Oracle user with the password Oracle. And we have a base operating system uh, with a 3 gig of file system uh, available on a total 7 gig disk. Um, we can SU to root and become root on this system uh, because the Oracle user is set up to do this. Um, If we tell it to go out and check for updates, it's going to go out and pull in all the data, make sure we're up to the proper um, host name. Notice in this, we couldn't resolve to the uh, publicyum.oracle.com. Uh, that has to do with the way the network is set up inside the virtual machine. <clears throat> it's actually going to fail and, and not pull down what we need because it can't resolve that name. Uh, we can fix that by changing the DNS to go to public DNS because right now it's trying to resolve to the desktop and get that IP address, which it's not allowing it to. So it comes back and says we're not uh, ready to do anything, but it does show that we do have an operational uh, Linux operating system. We can shut it down and then look at the next steps that we need to go to. In the next steps, we've got the VM going, and there are labs we can go into for Linux, going in and creating containers and doing package management and starting and stopping services. We're not going to do that in this tutorial because all we wanted to do was make sure we had a base operating system available. Now, from here, we need to go into the steps of installing the Oracle database. Uh, we can go in and follow these. Uh, but the first thing we need to do is download the Oracle database. And that can be done by going into the Oracle database downloads. We accept the license. We're running Linux 64. Uh, click on that. It comes up with the files that we need to bring in. We've already brought those in. We downloaded the 12 and the 11 versions so that we can play with both. Uh, from this we can go in and <clears throat> copy these to the local VM, expand them, and then execute them as is described in the, uh, in the, the basic install tutorial. Uh, the second option is we could skip all of this and go straight to creating the Oracle database. And that is done by rather than downloading um, the Linux uh, binaries, we download the, um, the database hands-on labs. And that is done rather than downloading the Linux VM, we download the database app VM, and that downloads Oracle 7, or Oracle Linux 7, along with the database and SQL developer already set up, and then the hands-on lab. That is done by accepting the license and then downloading the uh, OVA, which is about 6 gig in size, which takes 45 minutes to an hour on our uh, slow network connection. And notice we have that again. The download development took about an hour because I started these two about the same time. So it took about an hour to download this. Uh, I'm sorry, when this finished, I started this so they weren't in conflict. The way we 
import that one is we do the file import appliance again put it in the virtual box We're going to call this one the Two Day DBA Foundation. We'll agree to it. It'll import and it'll take about three to four minutes. And I'll pause at this point. Or I'm sorry, instead of pausing, I'll go back and say we can go in and begin the tutorial for a non container database. Since the database is already installed, we don't have to go through that. We just go launch the DBCA. So to review what we've done, we went in and looked at the two-day DBA through the Help Center, uh, which is one way of coming in and doing the database uh, administration. We can go through the install, or we can go through the getting started with administration, uh, which is what we were trying to do with, um, with either the Linux instance, the Linux VM, go through and do the install or the database developer VM and start with the database administration. I personally like going through the learning library and following the tutorial that it shows and either go through the install with the Linux VM or the creating a database with the database developer VM. And I'll stop right there <clears throat> and we'll continue with both of these VMs do a walkthrough of the database install in part two, and then do a walkthrough of the database creation in part three.